Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayoko Fishala. Um, this is a series that we basically started from chapter one and now we're at chapter 19 today. Yesterday we did chapter 18 and it's been amazing. I know my end has been good. It's not been easy like just filming every day, but I feel like we're right in the middle of it and I feel like I kind of am getting used to this. So um, yesterday we basically talked about the Levites and how they're basically a responsibilities and they don't have an inheritance. Um, I feel like certain questions that you probably want to ask is like, um, are Levites like somewhat pastors in this, you know, new age that we're in right now? Mm. Uh, debatable, right? That That's something that you might want to look into. Um, so basically it's talking about the first fruits and um, how we should basically sacrifice unto the Lord. Um, and it goes into like in depth about, and we said we're going to look into this, the sale of his patrimony. When I looked into it, it was about like selling um, the land on, in Israel and basically like, um, I guess it was like kind of related to how to allocate resources. Um, but we can check now, something that we can check now is it was a sale of patrimony. Oh, wow. So how did your day go? Um, okay. Um, while we're here, let's see. Bodylight.org. Perhaps it has something for us. Perhaps. Um Okay, so I don't think I, I don't know. Do you see anything? Um, okay, it says, beside that which cometh um, of the sale of the patrimony, the Levites had indeed no part, no inheritance with Israel, um, but they might individually possess property and in fact often did so um, by comparing first kings 2 26 jeremiah 32 7 acts 4 36 the levites who desired to settle at the place of the sanctuary and um, would probably sell his patrimony while when quitting his former place the text directs that he should not withstand in any such private resources duly enjoy his share of the proof um, perquisites provided for the minister, for the ministers of the sanctuary and as he was waiting at the altar it should be a taker with the altar so I, that like I said like it definitely has to do with like selling your land but I wasn't quite sure about the resource allocation part but yeah it was about like selling your land like because they didn't have any just a bit summary of what the what it says like it says you know because they don't they did not have they don't have an inheritance, you know, with Israel. So they were allocated um portion of the land that they possessed and they had every right to sell the land. Um, so like, yeah, that's that's pretty much like what we're gonna what we learned yesterday, um, partly. Um, and then when it talks about like I like this place, like um, verse 10 when it says, There shall not be found any. Um, among you, anyone that maketh his son. And was it this part? I believe it's like, there was this part that says like, you know, if you find someone that is a witch or an enchanter and someone that pra practices idolatry and someone tells you about it and then you confirm about it, like you have, you have to basically put away with that person. And I feel like in this, you know, in this today's culture like we tend to like um you know we tend to like look down upon like people who are actually wanting to like get the truth out there like they, they say like well reporters are you know gossip they're gossip um and we look down on people who are actually wanting to like bring the truth to light right they, they say well um they no respect they don't respect persons which the bible says do not respect persons if you see the truth right you should aim to bring it out okay and and that includes in the church as well but i feel like your approach in doing such things if you find something like someone is doing something that is 
idolatrous that could potentially affect the church and you have the like the responsibility to bring it out as a child of God but the way you go about it is really important too like you need to if you don't if you don't really know how to carry it out like I feel like you have to like you should talk to somebody that you know that could you know connect you with the proper um you know authority almost like but then I feel like in this case where like it's somebody it's somebody's house and then someone in that in the house living with the person is committing adultery like you kind of need to talk to the person right the person that owns the house right and then they can confirm and stuff like that so yeah that's just my little bit on that um I just thought I should say it because like I heard something else today and I'm like yeah like if everyone is keeping things to themselves like that is going to be it's gonna give obviously gonna give the you know the leaders so much power and then that is no good right that is no good it is not good because we need to be able to voice out our opinions just like the children of Israel did voice it out but obviously, you know, the leaders obviously are in a place of, you know, of, of they, they speak on, on behalf of God. Well, the the good ones, or should I say the right ones, right? And you have the responsibility to be discerning of them. But also understand that the world back then is different from now. Like now the devil is not joking at all. Like it's not plain. Like it can possess anybody. So again, like I'll just say like, you know, work out your own faith by yourself. Okay. But if you do care about somebody like, or you, something is going on, you do care about someone and you want to like disclose certain things to somebody, you know, just to help the situation, do it with wisdom. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. So like, basically like that is what it's talking about today. Um, let's see. And it talks about, you know, the prophet should not, because you see here, it talks about, you know, the false prophet. Don't presume what the Lord is saying, you know, when it actually did not command you to say what you're saying. Do you get what I mean? Um, so like, yeah, like that's basically like what we talked about yesterday. We're going to pray now. Oh, Heavenly Father, I give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us here. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love, for your care. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you for not letting us go. Thank you for holding tightly onto us. Thank you for giving us the grace to be here today, again, to be fed with your word. But I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you open our spirit up to receive from you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we will never run dry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I glorify your holy name, O oh God, because you are I am that I am, beginning and the end, O oh God, never fails me. Be thou exalted, O oh God. But I take the way, O oh God. I render my soul, my spirit, O oh God, unto you in the name of Jesus. Father, I lead the way, O oh God, and speak through me now as we continue this Bible study today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be doing um chapter... 19 today and it says when the lord thy god hath cut off the nations whose land the lord thy god giveth thee right and thou succeedest them and dwelleth in their cities and in their houses thou shalt separate three cities from thee in the midst of thy land which the lord thy god giveth thee to possess and i feel like it's really important that when you are reading the turn, you should understand the promises of God. When God said he was going to give the children of Israel certain promises, like he didn't say that they were going to like have to also things for themselves. Like he didn't say that they were, they were going to have to like build stuff. He didn't say that they would, you're going to have to make roads and all of these things. His promise was that everything would have been prepared for them. Like the dream house that you're wanting and you're praying God for, God is saying that it's going to be already built. You, you, you wouldn't have to build it from scratch. This is already going to be built for you. It's going to be ready for you. All you need to do is obey him. It says, and the, it says here, all you just need to do is possess it, the houses, right? And it says here that when you're going, when, when you're going to possess the, the land, make sure you separate three cities you know why it says thou shalt prepare thee away and divide the coast of thy land which the lord thy god giveth thee to inherit 
into three parts and every slayer may flee thither, right? Um, and this is the case of the slayer which shall flee thither that he may leave. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he ateth, it said not in time past. So this guy is basically killed somebody innocently. He didn't know. Um, that does happen, right? He, he killed his neighbor ignorantly and he did not eat his neighbor. There was no hate in his heart for his neighbor. And it says, as when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood and the and fetcheth a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree and the head sleep sleepeth from the hell and lighteneth upon ish, upon his neighbor that he may die. So this is an accident. And it says he may flee unto one of the cities and leave because if the children of Israelites catch this guy, they would, you know, do jungle justice. They would, they would mess him up. And it says, lest the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer while his heart is hot and overtake him because the way is long and slay him, whereas he was not worthy of death. So this man is not worthy of death, right? Um, it said, in, in as much as he hated him, not in time past, because he did not hate him in the past. So this is an innocent murder. It says, wherefore I command thee, saying, thou shalt separate three cities for thee. And if the land, if, if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all this commandment to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more for thee beside these three. So if you were to just obey God, like I like this passage, like God gave them a commandment that you're going to possess this land, this land, all the things that's going, that's going to be in the land. You're not going to have to build anything. It's going to be like already made for you. You know, like our companies, like big companies basically employ, you know, employees. And then they give them like all of the basic amenities that they could ever need, like the car, the house, everything. God is literally our boss, is our CEO. And he's saying that, well, go and possess the land, you know, take everything, take it, take it, take it. Like you don't need to do much. And it's saying here that in the land, let's just imagine it's a it's a house. Separate three rooms in the house, right? Separate three rooms, three rooms in the house, and this is going to be a place where a visitor will, um, basically, um, innocently killed someone, um, can come dwell and and find refuge. And he's saying that if you do this commandment, I would create three more rooms inside your house, out of nowhere, right? That's what he's saying. He said that innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. And so blood be upon thee. Okay, let's see. Um, that innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Um, okay, so he says, but if any man eats his neighbor and lie in wait for him and rise up against him and smite him mortally that he die and fled in one of the cities the elders of the city shall send and fetch him thence and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood that he may die i, I want to analyze this 11 and it says but if any man hates him no verse 10 i mean that innocent blood shall and be not shed in thy land right that this is really important um so the, the blood must not be shed in their land um, which the Lord of the Lord that their God had given them for an inheritance. So if this incident, because remember the context of this or this judgment was that, you know, Paraventure they went into um the wood. So this is not, it didn't say if Paraventure, if this, if the man goes into your the promised land, if the man goes within your gates, it says here, this is outside the where they were. This is the wood. This is the context of what God is saying. This is basically the context of it. It says the wood, but God is not saying here, look, emphasis on the location, right? It says the wood, but it says here, if it is inside, where is it? It said, if it is within, if, it's, if it is in, inside your land, the Lord, that the Lord giveth you for an inheritance, so that the blood will be upon you. And that's the thing um, that basically, um, that's something that I noticed about like, you know, the culture of the Israelites, like if, basically one person did something like it's usually kind of like affect each and every person 
Um, so like if someone does something and you don't speak out or you don't act or you don't call the person out and stone the person or kill the person, it means that you're actually agreeing with such thing. And so like this part is saying that if that person spilled um, an innocent blood on your land, okay, it means like the blood, you, you're also responsible for that. Like you're also responsible for that. Just like um, Moses, when Moses, you know, was on the side of the people, he was also responsible for the people. So they were weaker, the weaker vessels within them, they were also responsible. The people were responsible for him. So I, and, and I feel like the question that's popping in my head is like, who am I responsible for, right? What am I responsible for? Like certain people that you're responsible for, but you don't even know that you're responsible for them and their blood is on your hands, right? So that's why it's so important that we take, take soul winning seriously. And that's why I post videos every day. No matter how busy the schedule might be, it's important to just show up for God. And it says, but if any man hates his neighbor and lie in wait for him and rise up. So this one is something that was done like consciously. And it says, then the elders of this city shall send and fetch him thence, right? And yeah, and then, you know, in, and it shall deliver him in, on, uh, into the hand of the avenger of blood that he may die. And it says, then I, th thine eye shall not pity him, right? Like you, you shouldn't pity him. Like don't pity him. Have you seen when, you know, believers, unbelievers do treacherous things? And I'm talking about treacherous things to the highest degree. Um, you can see situations like in the pharmaceutical company, the situations um, with the talinomite epidemic. Should I even call it an ep epidemic? Because it was definitely something that was done purposefully um, by, you know, you, you, they were purposefully restraining or they were purposefully not wanting to give, was it? They were purposefully basically poisoning pregnant women. Right? Because they could have anyways, let's not get into that because you, you should look into that. The talidomides um case that will show you how really grievous people are, industries are just for profit, just for money. Um, the HIV um crisis also in South Africa, look into that as well. So you, you're going to see how devastating this whole situation is and why you should not actually pity people when they're actually going through situations, when the judgment of God has finally been carried out in their lives. And I feel like sometimes, you know, you might be feeling that sympathy and then somebody that God has judged, you now go and be helping that person. That is an error. So that's why it's very important in our giving to have discernment. You don't go about giving somebody that God has, you don't give something to someone that God has cursed. You need to be very careful. Okay. So, um, and it says here, let me see. It says, thine eye shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel. Okay. But, and um, that it may be, it may go well with thee. You see, you have to put it away. It says, thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in tents, in, in thine inheritance, oh my goodness. And it says, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. So basically, this is basically talking about like, don't steal people's lands, like respect, you know, um, property rights, right? And it says here, one witness shall not arise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Okay. So this is, this one too is really important. Like if someone did something and you can't basically like just go up there and just start, you know, saying certain things, like you can disclose your concern and then just put it on radar that, you know, another person should observe the character of that person so that the, the darkness can be brought into light. Um, and it says here in 16, it says, if a false witness rise up against the man to testify against him, that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord 
before the priest and the judges, which shall be in those days, and the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness be a false witness, and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he hath thought to have done unto his brother. So thou shalt, so shalt thou put the evil away from among you, and those which remain shall hear and fear, and shall henceforth commit no more any such sin among you. And thine eye shall not pity, but life shall go for life, eye for an eye. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, and for hand, foot for foot. Okay. So this is basically like I feel like you can say, well, you know, Jesus said to love our neighbors as ourselves. Like, yes, you do understand certain things. Like, do you love your neighbor as yourself? But then we need to really understand what love is. Like, we need to really understand what love is. God loved the Sadducees and, and Pharisees that he corrupt he, he, he corrected them. You know, he corrupted, he corrected them and he laid judgments upon them and he told them that they would not enter into the kingdom of, of, of God. That is love too, right? I feel like we all kind of have our own different definitions of what love is, but we need to understand that God loved the children of Israel. God loves his people. And love is not just about like, you know, overly being affectionate. Love is, you know, judgment. Love is justice. Okay, love is many different things. Hey, listen to me. What does it mean to love your enemies to you? Ask yourself that question because I feel like a lot of us we do have that misconceptions and we we don't engage in warfare because we're scared that oh Jesus said to love our enemies and then you're not wanting to put in the work and act out the commandments of God. You need to obey God. Obey God, obey him. This is what is what is this is what is worth saying. Do not pity them. They, they need to be put away from amongst us so that they don't corrupt us. Do you want to make heaven? Anyway, that's about it for me today. Um, it's pretty much that. Um, so we're gonna go into prayer now. Remember what I talked about before, just a bit of the beast. Um a summary about what we talked about, like God is going to, in this year of restoration, God is going to take you into a land where you did not even have to like stress about building the house or buying the car or the stress about certain things. Like these things are going to be available unto you, but you're going to have to engage in possessing the land, right? And it says here, like if God says to release something, to let go of something, let go of it because God is wanting to bless you. He's wanting to bless you. When you give to God, he will bless you. Right. And we see that example in when God is saying to leave, to create three cities or leave out three cities out of the land that they possessed for those ones that killed someone innocently and that he, he, he was going to give them. He said, he said, then thou, then, then shall thou add three cities more for thee beside this three. So this is what God is going to do in this, in this season. Just be able just be willing to let go, let go and let God. When he says to give, give, okay? And also like, you know, um, when you're you're pursuing justice, when you're pursuing to bring the, the darkness into light, because as children of God, you know, we are the light, we are justice, right? And don't mind anyone telling you that because you're discussing certain things, like you're gossiping, like we need to talk about certain things in the church. Like this is something that we need to talk about. And, I, and it's women that often bring such news into the light enough of that um you know myth that women are supposed to be quiet and not talk enough of that enough of that we would talk but we would do it in an approach that is pleasing to the lord by through faith right we we will not excessively talk we'll talk when it is appropriate right we'll talk when it's appropriate and we'll do it well in the name of jesus all right, so um, now we're going to pray. 
Orisa te pozo takita poja shate pozo ndo kore bali shate poza shata kabaye. Rese te pozo ndi ki pashuta kabari sa ndi ki zali shatoze. Roga bali pozo ndi ki shata kabaye. Rati ke pozo ndi li jashata kapali so ndi ki rado zalira. Man ndi ki re oza shatira asata kabaya. Heavenly Father, I give you all the glory. I give you all the adoration on I be thou exalted, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I honor you, O God. I thank you for being my God and my Father. Thank you for being your Lord and their Father. Father, I thank you, God, for your message today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for we expecting in our spirit without which you're about to do in our lives in this year of restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we align ourselves spiritually to tap into what you're doing in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your giving us the grace to obey you in the name of Jesus. If you say move, we'll move. If you say jump, we'll jump. If you say what, whatever you say, oh God, we will do in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus and we will surely possess our prom- we will possess the land we will possess our promised land in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Oriza sate po zonu ko rogo bo li pa se te ke po za shamne ra te po ze li sa ta po za ka pa tir e za sonne rege ze se te po zota kira ando za le sa ti ka te ro ba tir e ze le ge po zota li shamne ra pa so to ko ze le si ta pa sonne ke za shara re ke ze se te ke Pozo to korobo di bozom ne ke shata paya rika se te pom ne ke ja shata kabaye. But I thank you, O God, for the edge, the fire around us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus that is preventing us from temptation, that is blocking every manner of evil, 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 evil plans. From being executed in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray, oh God, that the word that you've instilled in our hearts today, oh God, for that it's going to it's going to bring forth fruits in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as we come again tomorrow to be filled in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, oh God, in Jesus' name, for that you perform wonders in our lives and you make up make us expectant by faith to receive from you in the name of Jesus. But I thank you, God, for even testimonies are being birthed right now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I glorify you, God. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So yeah, pretty much that's where we're going to end today's um video today. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Ayoko Vishala. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up or you comment, you share. Okay. Um, okay. Until next time, tomorrow. Bye, guys.